how does it feel now to like how hard was it to be patient through these past two two and a half years waiting for these songs to have an out a time to put these out and sitting on these for so long uh, sam you go first oh uh, can we swear oh yeah absolutely <laughs> okay <yeah. laughs> nearly, nearly oh, speaking for myself nearly lost my fucking mind mm. uh just you know there was a lot of is it happening is it not happening but it's also you know every one of us is in a different location like uh and depending what location you're on it depends how things are going down like of course in summer um you know cold and flu dies down a bit things get a bit more sensible people can get to work but we're in the southern hemisphere and uh sam Hoynes and dave are in the northern hemisphere so when they're free and easy, we're like locked down and sort of, uh, you know, struggling. Well, Matt's locked down and I'm running around. And so, yeah, now now we're sort of like at this stage of it. It was frustrating. Like, you know, it, it just constantly felt like we we're about to get going and then things would stop. So that that's how it was for me. Happy it's done now. But, you know, I'm kind of at the stage of I didn't, be I didn't believe the album would actually get finished and released mm -hmm. until think about a couple of weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah same the same sort of vibe for me like it was it, like all the albums have been difficult to make i think just because of the nature of the music it's mm. um because there's so much sort of different stuff going on it's not quite as down the line as you know just doing a normal death metal album if you will or a, like a normal black metal album so um yeah it was it was pretty it was pretty hefty sort of getting through the last couple of years just piece by piece slowly getting there um and, and also maybe the fact that like all four of us we've all got a bunch of other bands and music that we do mm -hmm. and all of that stuff seemed to be able to go ahead with me and sam because we've got we've got a band we've got stuff over here so all of us being in the one spot it's a bit easier and i know dave and the other sam you know they've got voices and ack over there and obviously if everyone's in the one spot then life's a bit easy so the whole the, this whole sort of upheaval of everything was just fucking diabolical but um yeah pretty pretty happy that it's done and it sounds good you know mm. i think it's it's our best i think it's the best thing we've done so far so it was but all far. worth it was it was just about worth the pay <laughs> the payoff dealing with all that <laughs> torment and I can confirm y'all, Matt and Sam, it's not a dream. You're not having like fever hallucinations or anything like that. I see the album on the streaming services. The pre-orders are out. Like it's going to happen, my friends. It's almost there. I don't believe it. <laughs> Until it actually <laughs> happens, you're not going to believe it. I I, I get it. Uh, Corey, jump in. There's a lot of good stuff in there that we can dig into and stuff like that. But I know you have plenty that you want to ask. Oh, yes, I do have one. Um, You guys, so... Coming out of the pandemic, we're going to turn it into like a happier topic now. Coming out of the pandemic, it feels like we're entering kind of a period of hyper creativity where there's just a ton of music going on. But more than that, there is a ton of genre blending going on. And that is something that you guys have kind of done since the beginning. And this album, no exception. You've got your death metal, you've got your black metal, you got your progressive. You're pulling from all of these different places. Do you feel that the weight actually made this album... I don't know, like better situated nowadays versus two years ago because there's so much more reception with the genre blending than there was two years ago. Um, I'm not sure. Like, I think um, I'm not really too familiar with what's mm -hmm. happening at the moment. Um, I know that in the last, you know, from I listen to quite a bit of black metal. So I know in the last, you know, few years, black metal sort of, you know what people call refer to as black metal has evolved quite a bit there's a lot more influences and just directions in the black metal sort of world um and at the same time i also know that death metal is is sort of having a bit of a, a revival maybe mm -hmm. um as far as as far as what we do i mean anything that i write it's just it's a it's an amalgamation of like you know, a lifetime's worth of musical influence and listening. And like, I listen to like a huge amount of music and I guess I just, 
the simplest version of Antichrist, like as far as metal goes, is it's death metal, black metal, and thrash metal all mixed in. You know, there's thrash riffs, there's black metal, there's it's all it's all in there. And on top of that, there's um, I guess sort of the maybe the the proggy and clean and ambient sort of bits and pieces and keyboards and all that sort of stuff. It's all it's all it's all thrown in the mix. Um, and I think like it's sort of you know it stems back for when when I played with um with Dave in Akoka. So Akoka have been doing that kind of thing yeah, to a lesser degree in the beginning, but certainly in more recent times and recent albums have done more of it. But um so it's sort of for me it stems from there and it's just further influences that have crept into the mix. Um, me and Sam, we've we've done music together for fucking over 20 years or something, you know? And like when the first thing that we did together was the Berserker, which was it was death metal, but it was it was pretty different to everything else that was out at the time. So what what we're doing with Antichrist is not really thinking too much about what's going on in the rest of the world. It's just our an amalgamation of everything that we listen to all thrown in the mix. And um yeah, I don't know, it's an inter interesting question about it being a more receptive sort of time for that sort of stuff because I'm not really too clued up on what's yeah. what's really I, current at the moment. Yeah, I, I don't really know what people are uh, are listening to. Like the only change, I know what you mean, like there does feel like there's been a little bit of a shift like uh, since um you know the <laughs> the middle of the pandemic has kind of moved past. I've sort of noticed that more with shows. Um, shows, there's a huge appetite for that, and people are super enthusiastic there. But um, whether they've got a bigger appetite for more off-the-wall kind of music, I don't know. I've got no idea. Like, you know, anything I wrote is just like, you know, like Matt says, a product of 20 years of just belligerent, obnoxious, you know, get up your nose like a... Uh, angry music mixed with like a bit of ziggurat rice boy sleeps and um what was it the dirty three so <laughs> <laughs> just luck if it works in this time better than usual yeah john yeah. you look like you have a follow-up <laughs> i oh, i have plenty of follow-ups just because of uh who we're talking to and everything like that so i'm trying to figure out which <laughs> one i want to go with first um i guess i'll, I'll say this because uh, this one might be a little bit of uh, more of a straightforward answer than the second question i have but uh, matt you mentioned the different other uh, projects that uh everyone in this band plays in you know voices Ackercock, um all of those different bands when y'all are writing is are you do you compartmentalize that when you're writing is it like okay this is going to be a voices riff or this is going to be a any christ riff or is or do you just kind of write things and figure out where it goes from there um i think if i start writing something i've, I've already got an idea what i'm trying to achieve mm. so so me and sam play in um, a band called werewolves and we've done in the last few years we've belted out four albums so with that I just I pick up a guitar <laughs> and just start recording. Like I, I know what I'm trying to achieve and I do it. Um, thinking back to writing these Antichrist songs, um, it's a little bit more, I'll do stuff and I'll build upon it. So, uh, you know, I, I'll start with like a death metal riff and then, and then it'll go weird and off on a tangent and there'll be bits and weird things happening. Or I might write something and send it to Sam because I know that it's headed in a direction that's more his area and um he'll finish it off or something but um yeah as far as mixing up bands i don't think anyone has any you know it's it's not really a thing like like i me me and sam this last album we've we've basically written the album together like mm -hmm. instrument musically so to speak so obviously like like sam loins he, he'll do the vocals he's sort of weird he's clean and peculiar vocals that he'll do and he, I guess it might be a little bit similar to what he does with voices, but the music's quite different. So it's pretty easy to separate, I guess. Mm -hmm. Sam, do you have any Sam, what do you reckon? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think Matt summed it up pretty well. All right. Uh, so my second question after that is, 
you have mentioned about the uh, all of everyone in this band is a technically proficient musician. I mean, you guys are out of this world players, and the nature I feel like of this band is always. You know, you mentioned progressive, like pushing those limits and trying to further your sound and push yourselves as musicians and figure out, you know, where to go from there. Do you think that in this album that y'all have uh, uh, basically done that and like pushed yourselves and challenged yourselves to bring Antichrist to wherever it is going next? Um, I think, I think this is probably maybe the most coherent album. Um, like I don't necessarily think that in the previous two we had sort of nailed the um, combining of sort of genres and ideas, but um, this one definitely feels like it's it, it's to me it feels like almost like we've become sort of a proper band now, like with the proper songs and a solid start to finish album that makes sense. Like there's a few. <laughs> You know, there's there's things I think we've done in the past where it's it's a little bit disjointed, which you know is a thing in itself. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe with this, we've we've sort of I, I quite often think with bands sometimes it takes them a few albums to to really nail what they're doing, and you know with that I'm talking about like huge bands as well, like not just beginning bands, but sure, you know, like sometimes I think that a band can take two three four albums until they hit absolute gold it's like they've done it that's what they should be doing um that's what i thought uh voices did as well like i thought the last voices album was was perfect it's for them so they've, good it's so, it's yeah. so good that's <laughs> yeah, actually think, both that one and the you mentioned werewolves like those albums just Fantastic. I have them both in there. Yeah, we used to have it up on uh, the record up on our wall for a little while. Actually. Yeah, I had it up on my wall <laughs> for quite a few months. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, well, I mean, th there you go. Like, it's particularly with voices. Like, I th for me, their last album was like perfect. And I think Breaking the ones, the trauma before, bond. The ones oh, yeah. before needed work, you know, just, just in my opinion. But the last one, I, th I think it's perfect. And I think, like, with Antichrist, I think this is, this is by far the best thing we've done. It's the most coherent piece of work. <laughs> Yeah, look, I was going to say one of the things is we're, you know, we're in our 40s and so we're kind of like a decade or two past that sort of like young urge where you need to show everyone what you can do on your instruments and stuff. Um, so now whenever we write, it's kind of like it, it's very much geared towards what we want to hear. Um, and as Matt says, you know, we've got, we're a few albums in now. We've had time to bed it down and just, you know, everyone knows like what matt and i get up to and after i think everyone's heard voices uh breaking the trauma bond that last album of this god i love that you know everyone knows that uh that dave and sam are absolutely at the top of their game as well um so yeah it's it's kind of good when we get together to make music there's none of this are we able to play it or do we chuck in something here like a little bit of razzle dazzle kind of thing it's like very much serve what the song needs uh to do what it needs to do yeah i, I think that's a great answer and i uh sorry Corey, i'll let you go in just a second i was just gonna oh, say no. I, I agree with what you said matt i we talk about this a lot as far as like third fourth albums being really where a lot of bands hit their stride my favorite bands iron maiden number of the beast was their third album right that's the one that got them to where they are now so sometimes yeah. it just takes a little while so i'm, I'm sorry Corey. go ahead Oh, no, 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 you're totally fine. Um, but with you guys kind of like, as you said, coming into the, the groove and this is the, the best album that you guys have put out or will put out in October because it's not out yet. Not everybody's had the privilege of listening to it yet. It's going to happen. Um, it's going to happen. happen. It will happen. It's coming October 7th. What are either the things people might find really unexpected about this album or your favorite things that you kind of experimented with or tried on this album that people, I don't know, maybe find might catch people a little bit off guard. They're going to find Dave's artwork pretty fucking unexpected, that's for sure. I want to talk about that. <laughs> the artwork is amazing. That. Put a pause on that. I was going to ask about that yeah. next. We'll, we'll, we'll move that like down the line yeah. a little bit. Um, yeah. There's a couple of moments like uh, where musically where I think people will kind of go, oh, I definitely know, for example, like with uh, the song that we played today, Miss Atheist. Um, 
yeah, you know, that's got a section that almost sounds, you know, like it could come from uh, Perturbator. Like, yeah, it's sort mm -hmm. of like 80 synthy kind of thing, but it blends in. Um, some of the other stuff that might raise an eyebrow or they'll have a question about possibly the lyrics, um, which are pretty off the wall. And this time I think we've actually decided to include them in the uh, release articles, the CD and the vinyl as well, so people can like read them and write a letter or send a tweet or something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're pretty far out there. So that might, I don't know, that might like raise an eyebrow too. Uh, I don't know, what do you think, Matt? Uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think about the lyrics too much. I mean, yeah, there's Cannibal Corpse released too many mutated a long time ago. So <laughs> they're um, only off the wall if you get banned from several countries. Yeah, so well, yeah, it. if you're not banned, you're you're fine. And then that's just good yeah. press. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think uh, I think anyone that anyone that likes this band and listens to it is going to be pretty. Is hopefully fingers crossed is going to be pretty sort of blown away by it. Um. And with any luck. You know, people that haven't heard it before are going to hear it and go, bloody hell, that's, you know, something different going on there. It's a bit, it's, you know, it, it's it, in, in a world of death metal where Cannibal Corpse can release, you know, an incredible album after 30 years of death metal, like last year or this year, whenever it was. And we can release it, you know, we'll release a death metal album and it to be completely worlds apart from that, yet still within the same genre. That's that's a pretty cool thing, I think. Yeah, for I sure. I, that's that's kind of that genre blending thing that I was talking about earlier, where the barriers that kind of define or box in a genre have been over the past few years just being completely obliterated. So you can be death metal, and Cannibal Corpse can be death metal, and everything in between those two can still be part of that same. There, there's no more boxes. It's just yeah. it's, everything is death metal now. Let's just let's just call it what it is. No. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and Co uh, both Corey and go I. Go for it. You, yeah, you've got your face on. The, yeah. We both Corey and I are uh, going to ask about the artwork because you mentioned it in the oh, yeah, press definitely. releases about this one. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at it right now, and it's very much mm -hmm. a eye grabber like attention. Like, ooh, are they allowed to print that? Like, how what, how did the concept uh, come about? And like, what were the conversations? Or did Dave just be like, "This is what we're doing. Deal with it." Dave is. Very much a, this is what we're doing, deal with it kind of guy. Um, and, uh, like, and here's the funny thing as well. Like uh, the artwork that you've probably seen so far, that's the tame artwork. Jesus. There's a piece, <laughs> yes. there's a piece he's done for the vinyl, um, which no one, no one outside of the band or label has seen yet. And, uh, and that... Like I'm a pretty out there sort of guy. Like there's nothing that that shocks or disgusts me or you know anything like that. But I saw the piece of artwork he did for the vinyl, and and I sat back. I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> um, everyone is kind of like, what is it? What is it? I'm not. I, I can't tell you. I no, can't tell you. Don't ruin the no, surprise. I don't want to spoil. The, I don't want to spoil the surprise. But I don't think I. I don't know how to put it into words. I will say though, it's probably very, it's very 2022. That's all I can say about it. <laughs> it means so many different things. D Dave's a um, D Dave's a Dave's a law unto his own regarding the artwork. So he, he's done everything for us, mm -hmm. and everything that we like, everything we do, he's going to be doing the artwork. End mm -hmm. of story. There's, there's no way that we'll release another album, and it won't be him. So. He, he's the uh, he's the artistic consultant, crea creative consultant, and um, yeah, he's 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 got a vision, and it basically revolves around devils, uh, corpses, naked women, women. nuns, yes. all, all the good stuff, you know. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that's that's the uh, that's that's where it, it all comes from his mind, and whenever he sends anything through, the rest of us like in a chat or whatever, it's like. Yep, brilliant, done. It's, <laughs> it's just nailed, first time, all the time. So, 
yeah, yeah. He, he very much has a style that you can see throughout uh but uh, you know the antichrist ba- uh albums and you know all the other albums that y'all do um just curious on like okay so if we're putting on a spectrum of like tomb of the mutilated or something like that like the the cannibal corpse albums that have like shocked and appalled people for years do you say on a spectrum between like one to ten how close do you think it is well uh for me it's a 10 like it's oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit yeah yeah look it is it's up there you know two of the mutilated um that corpse getting growled uh it's it's up there like you know i saw it and i've put out anything and everything like in my so-called musical <laughs> musical career i saw the artwork he did and my yeah my first response after wow was shit are we actually going to be able to put that out um oh my god it's it's very it's very us it's very dave um it's not trying to be like anyone else like you everyone will see it and they'll be like my god that is probably the most antichrist imperium image i've i've seen in my life uh yeah just uh, I, I just wish it was out there now so i could like so we could all share our like shared trauma um <laughs> just go wow huh shocking people in 2022 is not going to be an easy thing to do but i'm cory now i'm so fucking excited well now i want to compare it to i have a a seven inch that's pretty um questionable with its artwork um so now it's like now i want to get my hands on this so that i can compare like start ranking my vinyl artwork with most to least questionable. <laughs> uh, I can guarantee that any parent or teacher that comes across this LP artwork is just going to grab the thing and just go right. Like, Excellent. Excellent. That's, immediately, that's what you like. want to hear. <laughs> yeah. uh, Corey, do you have anything else for Matt or Sam? I just have the question. You can ask any other questions if you want to ask those beforehand. Yeah, I'll just ask one. Uh, this is the kind of the overarching one that I usually ask mm-hmm. um, uh, every artist that comes on when they're releasing an album. And it doesn't have a right answer, and both of your answers could be probably be different or no answer at all. And it's just, what do you want people to take away from the album when they listen to it? Sam, you go first. You know what? People were the last thing in my mind uh, when... I was making it, so um, I've got no idea what they want, what they're looking for, or what it's going to do for them. Like it was for me, it was just very much a, a band experience. Um, I, whoa, it's an adventure. It's pretty long, and it goes over a lot of terrain. Uh, but it's all, you know, I'm a I'm a kind of visual person when I listen to music. For me, it's colourful as hell it's like the focus is great it um it's high vis it's you know it's it's a gorgeous deep dark evil album that just hits so many high points and it doesn't you know for something that like it's a long album like you'll be listening to a lot of music when you sit down to it but uh you know it's not going to leave you sitting around too long before the next high point you know comes through and, and knocks you out of the ring so I guess that's what I want them to take away from it. anyone listening to it. It's, it's. I know our crowd's like uh, fairly niche. Um, I know they're going to go away satisfied after they hear this. That's Hell for yeah. sure. Hell yeah, Matt. What about you? Um, I guess Sam's probably sort of said the main thing, the main points. Um, I always like with this band. I always like the idea of having such contrast like such lightness and then mixed with like total darkness as well so you've got the sort of clean and nice bits combined with the ultra heavy or the really blackened sort of ideas so yeah i just think um i I hope that people are sort of really into that contrast that occurs throughout the album um otherwise everything sam said pretty much fits the bill and and also i'm sort of almost the same it's like it took so long to get the album happening and to get it to in the last few weeks of the mixing is where it all just everything fell into place so mm. there's so much trauma up here trying to do it <laughs> that i don't give a fuck what anyone thinks but at the same time i really hope everyone likes it i'm sure they will <laughs> yeah you just want them to be able to hear it at this point like that's it that's yeah, the only thing that's it. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to expand on. I'm going to expand on something Matt said. Just like 
every other album we do like any of our other bands you know we know it's a great album like from the moment we enter the studio or whatever antichrist imperium is just such like because it's so different you know we, personally I, I don't know if it's a good album until literally a month or two before like mixing finishes mm. and it's sort of like the improvement curve is incredible it's kind of like finally oh it's starting to sound sort of good now uh and then like two weeks from the end it's like hey we've got a we've got a good album and then in the last week those last few days <clears throat> it hits the, this improvement cliff and literally every couple of days like it doubles uh in how good it is and i'm just like yeah, this time around, uh, it, it just, it's amazing. It all just comes like three or four years of work just comes in a sharp focus, like in the last couple of days of the mix. And, you know, and then we're like, yeah, I think we've got something pretty amazing here. So, yeah, I'm uh, interested to hear what people say about it. Yeah, that's an interesting insight. It's almost like the the album is developing like a sketch or something like that. You know, you have the little bits, and as it goes forward, uh, it reveals itself after after time. That's uh, interesting insight, Corey. I will let you ask the last question. The important question. So you guys have been in the business for a bit. You guys have a lot of a uh, lot of history making music, and I'm not sure if you've ever been asked a more important question than the one you're about ready to be asked. But <laughs> here goes. What is your favorite dinosaur? Uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's very easy. I like dinosaurs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always a good one. Always a good one. Um, what are the little ones that the chickens are descended from? Raptors. Raptors. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I like raptors just because I like the idea that if you could somehow travel back a few million years in time, you could eat a raptor and it probably tastes like the most chickeny chicken ever. I think the raptor would eat you, man. Yeah, you know I mean, the little ones, the little ones. You know Jurassic Park, where the little yeah. ones sort of like, you know, oh those those tiny little guys. Oh, I yeah. know what you're talking about. They're called We're, the I own chickens the at the moment. I'm trying to remember. I own chickens, and you can sit on the veranda and watch them sort of like bob around and sort of like, and you can kind of like go, yeah, I can see how that was like a bit more featherless and a bit more dinosaury, like. Uh, <laughs> You know, a few million years back. Compsoganthus. So, That's what that one's called. Ah, uh, thank you. Well, there yes. you go. The raptor, the raptor is the bigger one. Yes, yeah. the raptor is the big one. Mm -hmm. See, I like those because if I could travel back a few million years and train one to be a, a like a pet of mine, that would be pretty badass. And, and plus, I mean, if you did time... eat one, that would be like ultimate bragging rights if you did eat one of those. Right. Like... <laughs> every time it does something smart, you can be like, clever girl. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's an amazing question. I'm so happy to have heard that. Thank you. I love that question. <laughs> oh, that's that's basically my music career now, like square yep, away. You're but, done now. Yeah. You can retire. Everybody knows what your favorite dinosaur is. No, all, don't all retire, please. I want more of these work. albums. 